Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the AA Ocean Shader, which is a shader which creates a displacement map uh, generated based on the Tessendorf Ocean Generator code, the actual code written by Aman Akram, um, whose website I will link in the description. I am pretty confident he's some sort of genius slash wizard to be able to create this because it's super impressive. So. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a polygon plane. doesn't matter what size, but if you want to follow along with me and follow my example, uh, I'm going to change the scale to be 24, so it's the same size as my grid. And we're going to go to the inputs, and we're going to change the subdivisions to be 1. It doesn't need subdivisions, so might as well just have no subdivisions. Next, we're going to go to the render man shelf and create a render man uh, pixar surface shader. So with your plane selected, press that button there and that will give you the uh, pixar surface which you can see here in the attribute editor so we want to reduce the gain on the diffuse channel because we don't want any diffuse but we do want uh, glass so water has the same properties as glass essentially when you're rendering it so refraction gain to one reflection gain to one and we'll go to advanced and we'll change the refractive index to be 1.33 which is the refractive index for glass. Next, we'll jump into the Hypershade Editor and we will map out our surface shader and we'll call this water. And then we will hit tab over the scene here and type in AA and we'll get AA Ocean PR Man Shader. Press three on your keyboard to expand that out. And then we're gonna hit tab again and we're we'll typing Pixar Displace. I'm gonna pick a Displace node Delete that guy there, and then um, assign the out color to the displacement shader for our water. Then we're going to connect our output displacement RGB to our displacement vector. Um, and I'm just going to create a preset really quickly. You can do the same thing here. So I'm going to save AA Ocean pre uh, preset, and we're just going to call this default, which I like to do with a lot of shaders. It just makes it easier to get back to um, the defaults if you screw around too much and change too many things. So uh, next we're just going to jump in a Pixar dome light and I'm going to grab a HDR image which I've already grabbed. This is one of the ones that comes with RenderMan um, and that actually really helps to make your water look uh, more realistic. So I recommend using an HDR image if you can in your particular shot. If not um, then just having some variation in color to reflect from the waves just makes it look a little bit better. And finally, you'll notice that I've already saved my scene and set my project. You will need to do the same for this to work, so make sure you do that. Let's run an IPR and see what it looks like by default. All right, not bad. We've got some water happening. Let's jump into the um, ocean shader and stop that render. So with a displacement, it won't be able to update in the IPR, so you need to make sure that you're stopping your IPR, changing whatever values you want to change, and then re-enabling it. So uh, the first thing that I'll mention is that you can have this animated. Um, it's got built-in animations based on um, your current time. So the current time can be set if you just want to set and forget, or if you actually want it to be animated, we can just create a quick expression to drive that. So if you right click on the current time, create new expression, and then we in the expression, we will type in uh, current frame equals time semicolon and click create. So now, oh, sorry, not current frame, current time equals time. So now um, you'll see that as you change your position in the timeline, it changes the current time. So the time is set in seconds. So this is, um, I've got it set to 24 frames a second. So the 24 second, uh, 24 frame mark, you'll get one second. And then at the 48 mark, you'll get two seconds, etc., etc. So let's um, render that at the 48 second mark. And you'll see that it looks different from the frame one mark. Okay, so resolution is the next one. This is basically how the displacement map is generated. So your resolutions start from a resolution of 128 by 128 and go up to, when you set it to 7, uh, 2K, so 2048 by 2048, and it's incremental in between there. Setting this to 2K will 
increase your load time dramatically, you will get a much nicer displacement uh, with you know better detail, but uh, the time to render will increase significantly. So keep that in mind before you go setting that all wild. And just as a comparison, I'll just quickly do it for you. All right, so that took about a minute for it to read the map. Um, you will see though, if I just zoom in real quick, and compare it to the last frame. I mean, that's obviously noisy because I didn't render it quite as long, but it is a lot smoother. And the transitions between the peaks and the valleys of the wave is a lot nicer. However, it did take a long time to load. So what I would say to do is have your resolution set low, block out your waves, and then increase the resolution for your final render if you wish to. Um, your seed is just the uh, the number which the random wave is generated from. So if you had a the the same size plane as someone else like me, and use the same seed, you'd get a similar or if not exactly the same result. Uh, if you wanted to get the same result as someone else, so if I change that seed to four and run the IPR again, I'll get a different wave just based on that um, seed. Rete repeat time is tied into your um, animation so this is the number of seconds that it will take for the ocean to repeat the first wave that you would have seen essentially fade will just um will sort of scale back your displacement so let's have a look at that um, so that's what our displacement looks like as it is if i s increase the fade to 1.0 you can see that it's mellowed out completely so if i say 0.3 ish you'll see that it's softened from that to that. This is useful if you've got the relative shape that you want from your waves, but you're just finding that it's displacing a bit too much. You want a slightly less wave. Overall, this can be a good way to do it. Chop amount is the choppiness of the wave. So this is the white peaks. Um, now this would affect uh, foam values. Uh, if foam was currently functional in the um, current version of RenderMan, it is not currently working. Um, it's a reported bug which is being worked on, I believe. So stay tuned for that. I So I won't be covering foam in this tutorial, but you'll get a nice little wave situation happening without foam. It still looks pretty good, if you ask me. Uh, but if we increase the chop amount to say five, for example, uh, you'll see that it's gone a little bit crazy. Uh, it's probably a bit too much for the scale. So let's say two and run that IPR again. So you can see it's starting to pinch at the peaks of the wave. That's essentially, um, creating a choppiness to the, the wave. So if I compare it to that, you can see that it's sort of pinching together there. I don't believe I mentioned ocean scale actually. So essentially what this is, is the diameter of your plane. So uh, this is gonna make the plane 100 meters by 100 meters. We could reduce it to say 50 and you'll get a much different result. So it's mellowed it out quite a lot. And um, because this, this attribute here drives the rest of your parameters. So make sure that you set this one first before you go in here and mess with this, with all the rest of these because they'll become redundant basically straight away as soon as you change the ocean scale. So let's keep working with 100. Uh, velocity controls the uh, overall size of your wave. So I'm just gonna reduce that chop amount to one. So if I have the velocity at five, you'll see that we got We've got um, smaller waves, but more of them. If I increase it to say 15 and run the IPR again, fewer waves, but they're bigger. So this can, depending on what you're looking for, can work in tandem with your chop amount. Um, so your wave speed is essentially how fast the waves move, um, which is pretty self-explanatory. So cutoff sort of acts as a smoothing agent. So if you've got a, a busier situ situation happening with your waves than what I've got here, like lots of waves of different heights, this will remove waves with heights lower than this value so um, our current wave height is 1.0 so this is going to be a 1.0 wave if i have more waves in the scene and set this to say 0.5 any of those waves that are 0.5 or lower will be chopped out and smoothed out so you end up getting a smoother sort of look overall and wave, wave height just defines the height of the wave so you can obviously see that's 1.0 let's change to 5 which is probably going to look silly yeah it looks pretty silly um but as you can see, has increased the wave height significantly. Um, wind direction is just basically the, it's gonna control the direction that the waves are moving in. So let's reduce our wave height down to 1.0 again. Um, so if I change that wind direction to be 90, this is degrees, it will move um, 45 degrees around the other way. So that's compared to that. You can see that's changed directions sort of coming towards the camera on this angle as opposed to going across that way. Um, dampening uh, essentially 
is when it's set to 1.0, all the waves will travel in the exact same direction, so you won't get any sort of surface waves. Um, if you've got it lower than 1.0, then you'll get a percentage of, wa of um, waves or sort of turbulence traveling in the opposite direction of your wind. Um, so if you're wanting it to look perfectly, sort of well, as perfect as possible, um, smooth waves and a dampening of 1.0 is what you want. If you want it to be sort of a bit crazy, you could change it to 0.5. And you can see now that the um, waves have sort of, it's sort of become a lot choppier because they're going in, in opposite directions to each other now. Um, and finally, wind alignment is the alignment of your waves based on the perpendicular direction of your wind. So at one, um, at a value of one, they're going to be mostly aligned. The higher you go, so if we go to 10, point, uh, 10 you'll see that all the waves are now uh, perfectly perpendicular or as perfect as what it can be to the wind direction. All right, so that is AA Ocean Shader. Um, as you can see, you can get all sorts of crazy effects with your waves. You can, it's quite versatile and it looks quite lovely just off the bat without too much alteration. Um, so have a play with it. There's plenty of things you can do. Um, I'll probably be covering um, AA Ocean a bit more in a how do I render tutorial. Um, we'll be looking at this and maybe some underwater business or something like that. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already subscribed, you should do so because I'm doing a couple of tutorials just like this and the one that I mentioned every week. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure you like the video as well. It helps other people find it on YouTube. If you want to stay up to date further, um, you can jump onto the Facebook group, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.